Hi there, my name is Tom Berry, Asset Finance Advisor here at Arc Co. Um, today I'm going to be continuing my three-part series on development finance with a headline focus on strong and sustainable relationships, specifically between developers and lenders. I think it's quite a prevalent topic during this time of COVID-19 and the uncertainty that it brings. Uh, developers will likely need to review and potentially alter their overall strategies, especially when it comes to their financial structures. Ensuring that a, uh, good relationships are built between developers and, and development lenders for now and for the months to come is, is going to be the key. This completely comes down to the communication between the developer and their current or prospective development lender. I would encourage developers who are in current relationships with lenders to address them on um, a couple of points. First of all, starting with interest and cost overruns. Um, to be clear, interest and cost overruns are a unlimited guarantee for a loan, as opposed to a limited PG guarantee, meaning that there is no limit to how much cost could be inflicted should the scheme overrun. Currently, it's, it's probable that there will be delays in completing development schemes. It, this, this could affect the cost of the loan for the developer. Um, obviously, in, in this sense, if, if, if possible, I, I would negotiate with your lender uh, an extension of the loan, avoiding potential added costs via the interest and cost overruns, should your loan have this type of guarantee, of course. Um, some lenders we've noticed in the market have already addressed this by giving a automatic six months extension to the loan term for developers. A examples we've seen are lenders contacting the client directly to make them aware that they've automatically extended the facility e even though that this would in theory breach the original agreement um, the lender has taken the correct precautions to protect the profit involved within the scheme not just for, them, for themselves but for all parties in included um, second point i would mention and to do this is really to focus and to do with developers who are approaching practical completion for a scheme with a strategy to build and sell um, a developer may wish to alter their current strategy for a scheme uh, considering the current market conditions of course um, they've changed and the the market for moving and buying is of course slowing um, social distancing has created certain obstacles such as removal companies are less available or unavailable um, also the uncertainty of unemployment is resulting in people not wanting to commit to the uh, commit to moving home, um, especially those that have been furloughed. Firstly, checking with your lender to ask for permission to extend the loan is the first piece of advice I would give, um, which of course will give the developer more time for their sale period. Um, the developer may also want to reconsider their strategy for the sale of units within their scheme. And what I mean by this is to uh, introduce the idea of a build to hold strategy in addition to the build to sell. So. The build to hold strategy is to either retain part of the development onto a medium or a longer term facility, such as a development exit bridge for 12 months or perhaps a buy to let facility for uh, two to five years, for example. So the strategy here could be to continue part of the development for sale, giving the developer immediate funds to then reduce their debt exposure, their current debt exposure, then refinancing the scheme on either to a bridge or a longer term facility creating passive income, in addition to uh, sales, which bolsters them in a uncertain time. The developer potentially could utilize all three of these strategies mentioned. So short term, immediate sales, medium term, a bridge facility, and long-term, a buy-to-let or medium-term facility for circa five years. By doing this, the developer will be protecting their profit margin and spreading their sales risk, which inevitably protects the maximum value of the property and thereafter the developer's return on investment. Firstly, asking the potential lender, uh, a good point to start with would be asking if the facility is on demand or if it is a committed loan. If the facility is on demand, the, the lender can recall the funds at any point. Of course, if they are committed, you've got the security that the funds will be on it. Committed funds can be more expensive. However, in my opinion, choosing a lender with committed funds in this current climate would make the most sense. Having the securities on fund, uh, the security of funds in an uncertain time, even with a slight increase in expense, is a small price to pay for control. Um, the second point, 
assessing the lender's uh, reliability. So having a reliable lender to work with, it creates security over the scheme and for the borrower, knowing that the lender has the ability to deliver the funds required, not just at the outset, but throughout the course of the scheme is, is pivotal to the developer's return on investment. Asking yourself, how, how approachable is the lender that you deal with? How much control does that individual have in order to deliver your requests promptly? Simply put, a lender that has too many layers in their company uh, to be able to approve your request can possibly lead to delays. So in a more direct relationship is key. In addition, a lender who cannot just uh, deliver the funds on time, but a, a lender that understands uh, development overall in, in order to work with the client throughout the course of the scheme and not just at the outset. An example being um, a lender that can actually deliver, say, a good quality project monitoring surveyor so that what is planned and what has been promised is delivered on time. Um, it's worth adding onto this point as well that, say, what, what, what do lenders look for in developers? In the current climate, the, the key points of what lenders look for in developers is more important than ever. Whilst the scheme itself is important, the, the lenders will take a strong focus upon assessing the developer's ability to deliver, which is reflected in their past history of delivering similar schemes. This involves analysing the developer's previous experience to prove that they can achieve what is now intended. Um, the, the lender will also want to understand the developer's wider team, such as uh, contractors, architects, for example, uh, which all, again, adds into the delivery of the overall development. In addition, so, some lenders may wish to look for uh, look deeper uh, into, the, into the wider team for assurance. For a, a good example of this would be understanding the contractor's financial stability. If the contracts could be facing financial uh, difficulty, for example, in the months to come, are, are they going to be able to continue performing throughout the course of the scheme? Um, I think to summarise, of course, uh, the key point throughout the course of all of this is, is communication. Um, in difficult times, communicating with your current lender and advisor for prospective new lenders is, is key. Make sure the points we've covered today, such as interest and cost overruns, on-demand or committed facilities, in tandem with finding a reliable lender to pursue a sustainable relationship, it is key in an unpredictable market.